Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, another episode of building a snook down farm. Um, but we're not at Snook Down Farm, we're over here at Tyne Dock and the reason why I'm here over at Tyne Dock is I want to show Stephen of Stephen's Heritage Railway how I um, built my road over here at Tyne Dock to get from one level up to another level way over there in the distance. Um, I'm sure looking and judging by what he's doing he's got a slightly higher um, height to adjust up to um, so this is what I've done here I've used um, this is six mil ply um, as you can see I've got battens at various stages which brings the road up the bank in different stages and it gives it a more natural look um, as you look up the hill or up towards the, the station there anyway and um, yeah so I'm hoping this could help you out Stephen um, the width across here is around about four and a half inches so you've got enough room there to put a paving in and a small road uh, that's if you decide to do it this way but um, yeah it's it's uh, a natural more natural look of um, building a road so I hope this helps you out if um, any of you not visited Stevenson's Heritage Railway um, I suggest you go and have a look at his channel right let's head over to Snookdown Farm and here we are back at Snookdown Farm and this is where we left off I'm pondering whether I should keep this Land Rover on the layout or not um, because it is a little bit too modern for the era that I'm building um, so in light of that I have bought this Austin station wagon it's more um, robust vehicle maybe what a farmer would have had um, for the period So yeah, I'm still pondering on that. Anyway, regarding the comments, I had some great comments yet again regarding um, yeah, the farmer having its own um, diesel supply or paraffin supply for his tractors. So I like the ideas that were suggested there and uh, I might use one of them. Um, when I come to do the farmyard, I might put uh, maybe a, a, a diesel pump with a tank in this little corner here so the uh, farmer can fill up his tractors and so on. So yes, yeah, so that's a, an idea that I am pondering. I'm always pondering. <laughs> anyway, so that's just a thought and uh, I do like reading the comments because uh, comes up uh, you, you guys come up with some ideas that I may not have thought about so yeah keep them coming so let's head over back to the bench and here's where we were back at the bench um, we're just about to fit the roof um, meeting up with the main roof and uh, you're probably wondering why I'm sitting the building on this uh, roll of cable it's to protect the soldered joints underneath the building here so that's uh, the cables running up to all the LEDs so that's the only reason why that's sitting there so getting back to uh, this roof now it might look complicated um, but it's not not really um, it's all to do with dimensions um, so basically we'll measure the distance across the top there which roughly works out at 94 millimeters so I'll write that down 94 millimeters and then we'll work out 
from this point here to the edge of the wall because the roof is going to go to the edge of the wall so we'll, we'll meet up where the roof comes down and meets up in this corner so we'll take a measurement from there which is uh, 69 millimeters and then we'll take a measurement from the top of the apex down to where the wall sort of meets the apex at the base there and then we'll add three millimeters so that'll work out at 41 that's 41 so now we got the basic dimensions of one side and um, that should be a repeat for the other side so if we turn that around so here, so something like that. So it should be the same if this is equal here. Um, yeah, because there we have the wall, the tiles flush, because there's going to be a stone ridge which comes down this side and this side. And then the roof just comes out a little bit here, so we shall check, see if that's the same that way and it looks like it will be the same so we shall cut the roof um, scribe the roof and see if it fits right so I've cut my roof um, one, one mil card again uh, I've measured across there and then cut it at that angle which hopefully should be the angle that meets up against the main roof um, I've took the dimension to the back of this apex here so there should still be a little bit of a gap there which is okay because now we've got a fixed point I can now measure that gap that's there and which roughly is it's another five millimeters to come off so all I've got to do is just add that five millimeters already to that fixed point but back towards me uh, mark it and cut it down to that and then that should fit this time so we shall see so as you can see that is a perfect fit now so there's no daylight in there it's, it's butted right up against the main wall as you can see this perfect fit so now all I have to do is just trim that back edge so it's flush with wall so I'll just mark that there and I'll carry that old line all the way across cut that back because it'll have a stone ridge on this edge as well so now we can trim that and then scribe it Right, so it's all marked out and ready to glue in place. Now I've just put a couple of pieces of card in there to support this edge. So when that gets glued on, we've got some um, support on that edge. Stop it bowing in. So yeah, that's ready to glue on. So we shall glue this on and then work out where we go from here. I'm now creating some edging stones for the roof. Um, this is one mil grey card, not the um, white card that I've been using. And I'm just marking these stones out roughly about four to five millimeters apart. And um, using a pen again, I'm just pressing backwards and forwards not going straight across but working from the centre outwards and that way I don't crease the card because this card is only three millimetres wide so we shall see what these look like once they're glued on and this is what the capping stones look like on the roofs as you can see I've done these two cable ends 
And what I'm starting to do now is I'm starting to add little tiny bits of card to go underneath these um, capping stones on the corners. So there's one there. I'm going to put one there. And uh, this is what they look like. So I've got a cut at 40 to 5 degrees there and a cut at 30 degrees there. And it's roughly 5 millimeters in length. And uh, they just sit underneath the eaves of these tiles there, just in there. And then they'll be painted a sandstone colour along with these capping stones. What I'm doing at the moment is just cutting out for the lintels and the window sills for the doors and the windows. Uh, just using um, some strips of paper, 14mm um, long and 2mm wide, and uh, they'll just be glued underneath here and here, and then they'll be painted um, a grey stone colour. So I'm just putting the window sills in now. Um, just using a little bit of glue under there. And just putting these paper pieces in. And it's easy as that. So he says, he's got to be quick with this glue. There you go, so that's the first one. And then we'll just paint them all up once they're all glued in. Get to always take off the excess glue. There you go. A couple of weeks ago uh, I had cut out this piece of card for the barn door and um, so now I am using this piece of card to form the um, support for the wall the lintel so I've marked a, a square line across this piece of paper put the cut out on the edge of that line and what I'll do is I'll draw around it So, find out where this um, radius starts and that radius starts, and then mark a line across, which will give us um, a starting point for marking out for the lintel. Stone across. Right, so we'll have something like that. So I'll just cut that out and then we'll stick it on. Obviously this will have to be painted as well. Right, so while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the um, arch doors, I thought I'd show you my ridge tiles. Um, it's 0 0.5 thick card, a uh, good quality card. Um, I've scored it 3.5mm, um, 3.5mm to the centre of the ridge there, and then just scribed it across um, at 45 um, intervals to create the ridge tiles and this is what it looks like 
when it's glued onto the ridge of the roof. I'll just zoom out a little bit there, you can have a close look. Alright, it's not painted yet, but uh, you can you can see what I mean there. So we'll have a proper look once I get all the ridge tiles on, and we're going to have a proper look around the building. And with the ridge tiles being added, it finishes off the roof. And uh, yeah, it's looking quite good so far. So we'll just turn that around and we can have a look at the rear of the building. And yeah. But before we start painting the roof, there's still one little job we got to do. And that's to bring up these chimney breasts. Um, add additional height to them. So that's what we're going to concentrate on next. Making So this is how I originally drawn the um, chimney. And um, this is how I'm going to make it up. So I've got four pieces of card there, two two mil pieces by ten mil, a toothpick, which is roughly two mil in diameter, and then I'll sandwich the whole lot together with two pieces of ten by seven card. So it should end up um, seven mil square. And then to cap it off, I'll put a capping piece of card on top and uh, over the top of the um, chimney pot. So the toothpick, in theory, should become the, the chimney pot and the, the spike which will go into the chimney breast that we have um, on the building already. And uh, here are the pieces. Um, I've pre-marked the toothpick here, as you can see. So the, the two uh, red dots at the top, that's the one mil thickness of card, which will go over the top of the chimney pot, which is this piece here. So all that remains for me to do is to glue these pieces together. So I'll just sandwich them like this between all the cards. So let's just see how I get on. So as you can see, I have super glued the toothpick to the first piece of card, and then what I'll do is the two mil, um, two mil cards go either side, one either side, and then I'll put another piece of two mil by ten by seven, and then we'll sandwich together, and that just leaves. So all I'm doing now is I'm just adding the two mil pieces. And that should create a sandwich effect. I'm just using um, ordinary card glue for those two pieces. And the last bit is another 10mm piece. Over the top. That's almost a chimney press finished. And obviously once that is dried, we'll wrap that around with some stone card or stone sheet. And this is what they look like with the stone paper wrapped around. Just, uh, it's only just been glued on this, but um, you get you get the idea of what uh, I'm trying to achieve.
Now, if you super glue both sides of the card, you can hardly get any breakout when you drill the holes. So that now will just fit over there to form the capping stone. Right, so that completes the chimneys. Um, they look, they look okay. Um, quite happy with the way that they have turned out. All I've done there is uh, where the capping stone was on the main breast. I just drilled a hole there, um, slightly bigger than the toothpick. I think it was a 2.5 mil, and then super glued the chimney onto the chimney breast and uh, yeah they, they look all right so there's only one thing left to do now and that's add the the window that goes into the annex now in the photograph it's here but i'm going to put it on th this main roof so this is going to be a um, kind of make it up as you go along. Um, I've already made a little bit of a start by putting a, a frame around the window and uh, with some 1.5mm plastic strut and I've used a little bit of angle on the bottom there of the window to give us the slope. So um, I'm just going to have to um, play this one by ear. So let's Right, so I've had a little bit of a, a think about this and I've come up with a solution. I'm using the width and the height of the frame to create the annex window now. Um, so what I'll do is, I've already cut these little pieces of plastic um, sheet, which has already got the wood panelling look on it, so all I'll have to do is, is paint that when I come to... Um, finish it off. So I'll just glue these onto there um, to create the angle um, and then the other side and I've got a little tiny apex to go across the top of the window. So let's just see how we get on. That's So moving forward this is what it looks like now with those panels on and the apex on the top I've put some card in between the front and back apex just so we've got somewhere to glue the card pieces on when we come to do the roof. So obviously I want to keep the roof the same um, as we have done with the rest of it so it all matches. And um, yeah, so it's not a bad little um, annex window this. And uh, this is where it's going to go, smack in the middle of this roof three tiles up just about there so what I'll do is I'll paint the tiles through there black so you can't see them and um, I'll add a little bit of um, glass on the inside and maybe some curtains as well and then that will finish it off so all I have to do now is just paint this So now we're starting to paint the lintels and window sills. I'm using this new paint called Ammo, Ammo Acrylic. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because the colour is not too far off from the stonework that we have. and um, kind of blends in. If you've noticed I've done the capping stones in sandstone already so I've, I've made a little bit of a start on them as well but uh, I do like this paint because it's just it's such a subtle colour, subtle grey and it blends in more or less with the stonework It's already there, so if you look closely, you can see what I mean.
as you can see we've come on quite a way since uh, since I started the annex window um, the roofs are all painted now um, the annex window is fitted and uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just adding some lead flashing to go down here in this crevice so I'm just putting a little bit of PVA wood glue in there I've already cut a little bit of a silver paper similar technique to what I used for high shields when I was doing the lead flashing there Oh, there, there goes the little tiny piece which will just sit in there. I'll press that home and then wipe off the excess glue. Another little job done. Just got to get the tip of this screwdriver and push the paper right into the corner. There you go. So that's another little job done. Turn it around, you can have a proper look at the front of the building now. Right now, we move on to the weathering. Um, as you can see, I've made a little bit of a start already. I'm um, just using a green humbral paint, a little bit on the brush, dab it off, and then just get right into those grooves there and then quickly wipe it off just as quick as you put it on so there's just a, a little bit of a hint of a green there green moss on the roof as you can see and I'll do that all the way around and then we'll move on to the black I want to put some black on this um, sandstone and obviously around the chimney areas so we'll move on to uh, the back side of the building just doing the same just where you think the moss is going to lie it normally lies in the corners Because this is painted, it's the only reason why I've gone for the paints because the the acrylic water paints are just too fine. Um, that's ideal for card, um, but it's not ideal for painted surfaces. Hence why I've gone for paint. Right, as you can see, I have completed the weathering on the building, um, the black on the sandstone and around the chimney pots and chimney breasts and the odd bit of rainwater down the walls there. So, I think it's uh, time we had a look at this on the layout. Right, so here it is. It's back on the layout. It's been absent for about two weeks now. And um, now that it's virtually finished, it looks quite good in that little spot. Uh, it's not too big, it's not too small. And there's still enough room in here um, for a little bit of a yard and maybe just something underneath 
this tree here. Uh, I didn't realise that there was this much space left um, for the yard. It's roughly uh, 150 millimetres from there to there and about 100 millimetres deep. So it's not very big, but it's probably big enough to um, maybe add a small um, chicken coop there or, or maybe a, a fuel pump or something for the tractor. But uh, we'll see. That'll be for another time and another video. Um, so yeah, like I said, we've still got the guttering and the drain pipes to do. I've got the guttering on order. I've ordered some 2.5mm round, which I'll just glue to the underside of there and then just paint it uh, the relevant colour. But uh, yeah, it's, as you can see the detail in the roof is well worth scribing the card. You can see the lid flashing around the base of the chimney breasts there. So yeah. So I think that's all we've got time for this week. Um, next week I'll be focusing on putting a couple of small buildings in this area here. And uh, yeah, I've got a couple of ideas of what to put there. So let me know what you think about um, these two vehicles. Shall I stick with the Austin? Or shall I stick with the Land Rover? Or maybe you have a vehicle in mind that a farmer would have had in the 1950s and 60s. Because obviously he would have needed a vehicle to go to the local town rather than driving his tractor into town. But anyway, I'll leave that up to you guys in the comments. But until then, enjoy your model railways. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.